The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Many years ago, decades ago, somebody wrote a poem about the epitaph the final words on a fictitious elderly woman's tombstone. And this is what the poem says. Here lies an old woman who always was tired. She lived in a house where help was not hired. Her last words on earth were, Dear friends, I am going where washing ain't done, nor sweeping, nor sewing, but everything there is exact to my wishes. For where they don't eat, there's no washing of dishes. I'll be where loud anthems will always be ringing, but having no voice, I'll be clear of the singing. Don't mourn for me now, don't mourn for me never. I'm going to do nothing forever and ever. Amen. Is that, if you're honest about it, is that really what you think eternal life would be like? Just an eternity of boredom? A concept of heaven above or heaven on earth as idyllic idleness, doing nothing, never knowing when you're through, just doing nothing, the day before, the day after, next week, next year, for all eternity, just doing nothing, dozing, slumbering, endlessly. Is eternity just one elongated, interminable yawn where century after century you sleep and there's no action, no activity, no adventure, or could it just be that when you enter upon the spiritual life and commit your life, your will, your plans, your purposes, your future, your present, and your past to the living God, you have, in fact, embarked upon the greatest adventure in all of time and eternity because God has a thrill of a will for your life and the living of it. And the only limit that there is to God is the sort of limit you put on God by your own cynicism, doubt, and skepticism. God's only limitation is the limitation which you, in your negative and pessimistic thinking, place upon God by your lack of faith. Said Jesus, have faith in God. He said, if you will have faith as a tiny grain of mustard seed, you can move mountains of material difficulty and you will begin the living of your eternal life right here and right now, the moment you begin to live by eternal values, truth and beauty and goodness, and the love of God and others. Deeply embedded within human nature is this longing for immortality. Belief in the immortality of the soul is found in all ages of the world's history, among all nations and tribes, in Aryan mythology. The souls of the dead are supposed to ride on the night wind, gathering into their ranks the souls of those just dying. In many parts of Europe, it's still customary to open the window when a person dies in order that the person's soul may pass out of the house and join the passing army of disembodied spirits floating by. In Persia, a dog used to be brought to the bedside of the person who was dying so that the soul might be sure of a prompt escort into eternal life. And the old Mohammedans called the rainbow a bridge over which the human souls passed on their way to heaven. There is an instinct, there's an impulse knit within our very being that there's something more than this physical material life and its death and that's the end of it that there is something lying beyond declared the master in my father's house are many mansions i go to prepare a place for you and when once asked the secret of eternal life how do you live forever he confirmed that the two great commandments the love of god and the love of others are the secret, not only of eternal life, life beyond the grave, but the secret of joyous life, abundant life, meaningful, exhilarating, exuberant, ebullient life right here and now on this earth as you're living at this very instant. If you will but give your life, all of it, without reservation, without holding anything back, if you will give yourself wholly to the will of God, God will transform your life and your future. History records that after one of General Wellington's great battles, the defeated French officers were taken to the Duke's tent. They declared to the Duke that they were not ashamed to be defeated by the greatest general in all of Europe. Wellington heard them with the utmost composure, then turned to them and calmly said, Gentlemen, your swords. And instantly the French generals yielded their swords to the English general as a token of surrender. And so it is that God 
the living God, the architect of time and space, the creator of all the universe of universes, and your loving father and your friend. The living God wants not just the token verbal acknowledgement, not just the memorized words of perhaps some prayer or creed. No, the living God wants your sword. God wants you to surrender. Your stubborn self will run riot. God wants your total commitment, the total commitment of your heart and soul and mind and strength, all you are, all that you hope to be, all that you ever can be, and God will make you then more than you are. God will empower you from on high for the living of his will and the doing of his purposes. Your life, your life may be the only sermon someone ever hears. Your life may be the only Bible someone ever reads. The way you live, the way you act and react, your faith or your doubt, your hope and your love, or your despair and despondency. May you live in love for God and others and in the irrepressible joy of living in faith. Said Jesus, I've come that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. He said, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He said, fear not, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He said, be of good cheer, and he began each one of the Beatitudes, or the blessed attitudes, as one theologian calls them, with the words happy or blessed. Happy are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Happy or blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. There is power for your life in faith in God. Years ago, an American took an English gentleman to view the great Niagara Falls and Rapids, and there, he said, is the greatest, the greatest unused power in all of the world. But the reply came back, oh, no, not so. It's not the Niagara River and the Niagara Falls. He said, the greatest unused power in the world is the power of the Spirit of God. By faith, you can begin to release the power of God in your life to invigorate you and enliven you and fill you with love and joy and enthusiasm. And that word enthusiasm is from an and theos, meaning literally in the Greek, filled with God or full of God. That is the real joy of life. Not just knowing about God, but knowing God. Not just finding out about God by hearing cassettes or listening to radio or television broadcasts or reading books or hearing lectures. Not just finding out about God, but finding God to the satisfaction of your heart and soul. Not nine weeks from now or 20 years from now, but right here and right now. God is near. God is here and available over the entrance to the door of a Massachusetts electrical power plant are written these words, dedicated to service. And that's it. It's not just power for its own sake to create awe and wonder, but rather power used for service, power dedicated to service. May the power of God in your life be dedicated to the service of God and the service of others to make this world a better place beginning with you. Because if you become a better person, this world where you are does become a better place. That is how God is transforming this world. There's a peace, there's a serenity, there's a calm in the life of a person centered in God. Rather than the frenzy and the worry and the fighting and anxiety, you know, the way oriental beekeepers will take honey without being stung by the bees. It's astonishing. They're almost unprotected by their clothing, yet they rarely suffer stings. And the explanation is that these natives are so calm and deliberate in their movements, they make no frantic efforts to protect themselves from the bees, making no attempt to drive the swarm away. And if a bee settles upon them, it no more attempts to sting them than it would attempt to sting a log of wood or the branch of a tree. The unexperienced man or woman, on the other hand, will be nervous, restless, he will frighten the bees, is frightened himself or herself, makes a noise, gesticulates, gestures, runs away, ends up being badly stung. Your troubles in life are forever swarming around you on every side like bees. There are always troubles and problems and vexations in life. But fret and fume and you will feel the sting of these all the more deeply. But live in quietness and confidence and faith and you'll begin to taste the sweetness of life. It is written, Be still and know that I am God. 
and that there is a still, small voice within. It is written, The Spirit in man is the lamp of the Lord, or the candle of God, that quiet, unflickering flame burning within your soul. The candle of God searching all the inward parts. There's an old proverb, Hope thou in God. God does not collapse when your fortunes collapse. Whatever disasters, whatever failures of grand enterprises, whatever your setbacks, God has lived through it all, and God has not lost hope for this world, and God has not lost hope for your life and your future. Concentrate, fix your mind upon the eternal things. Years ago, it's reported there was an unusual display of falling stars and meteorites one night over Syracuse, New York. And some people, in their superstition and their fear, who were living near the university, became frantic. They ran out into the streets in terror. They were thinking the end of the world might come. They were screaming and shouting and people fainting. But then the chancellor of Syracuse University, a professor Day, came walking out onto his lawn. He carefully looked up and scanned the heavens above for a few moments, then held up his hands for silence and said to the crowd of people out on the walk and in the street, it's all right, he said, my friends, have no fear, because the fixed stars and planets are still in their places. These are only showers of small falling stars. And likewise can you say in your soul, in your days of perplexity and change and problems, that everything is going to be all right because God is still there. God is the fixed star of your universe. Have faith in God. And in faith in God, you'll find at long last, you'll find yourself beginning to live as you've longed and yearned to live, as you were born and created to live. Listen to this. One historian back in the early 1900s wrote that there was found a great bell in Moscow, Russia, a bell which never had been hung and never had been rung. It was simply lying there, rusting in a warehouse, one of the largest bells ever made in the world. But its clapper had never swung against its great echoing sides in reverberation and music. It remained silent for decades. And that may be exactly how you feel in your heart, in your soul, in your mind this moment as you listen to this worldwide broadcast. Your soul was designed and created by God to sing praise to God, to love God and others, to worship God. And until you do, you will not have expressed your deepest spiritual feelings. You'll not have found the fulfillment of why you're really alive, to live in faith and joy and hope and love as the faith-born son or daughter of God you are. This moment, claim that in living faith and let your soul ring and reverberate like a bell. Let peals of joy echo forth in your heart as you begin to love as you were created to and find your place in this universe and your place in God as you've so long longed to find it. And at long last, the bell in your soul, which has so long been silent, will begin to peal and ring with joy because this is how you were really created to live as the son or daughter of God. You really are. Write to us, will you, to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. If you're interested in these things I've been discussing on this broadcast, in this worldwide program, write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day. <laughs>